Colonel, welcome. I so appreciate you taking our call today. Well, thank you, Doug. It's great to be on your show again. Holy cow, this thing last night just frustrates me to death, and I can't imagine how frustrating this must have been for law enforcement. We've all gone through this. We mere mortals have been pulled over before, and we are requested for certain information. What is absolutely required by by the law? We, do we have to respond to driver's license, you know, registration and insurance? Yeah, so the, 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 the Tenth Circuit Court said in the United States versus Rivera that upon a traffic stop, you know, a traffic stop which is based on a violation, of course, we can't just pull a vehicle over just because, because we want to. There has to be a legitimate reason. But once we pull you over, you're, you're actually being detained. And you have to produce a driver's license, vehicle registration, which allows us to run a computer check, um, issue a citation. Um, and then we can also ask questions pertaining to things such as your identity, your travel plan, the ownership of the vehicle, and that's all considered a detention. Once once we have issued our citation and we've taken care of our business and there's no longer reasonable suspicion for any other type of criminal activity, then we are required to let you go, and we can no longer hold you any longer. So, yes, yeah, driver's license registration, give us a chance to do a check on that, I'm ask a few questions, and then you're on your way. Are there any questions that we can refuse to answer if if we feel that they're inappropriate? Or, you know, I, I, this guy obviously felt everything was inappropriate. So can we yeah. can we refuse to answer something? Sure, sure. Yeah, you can, you can refuse to answer questions, anything that might be um, incriminating or something that you don't think would be appropriate in the traffic stop. Um, if a trooper comes up and says, you know, do you have 20 pounds of marijuana in your backseat? You know? Of course, you don't have to answer that question unless he has some reason to believe that, uh, that it might be there and he, he can search for that. But, but no, you don't have to answer every single question um, that you've, you've been asked if it's self-incriminating or it would lead to your um, violation of your, your constitutional rights or, or Miranda violations. But, for instance, last night, we were, it was a simple traffic stop. It was a lane travel violation of a 70-plus-year-old man by the name of Miss West Carlson, and and, uh, of course, he had a long pattern and long history of, of these type of issues. Uh, revoke registration, revoke concealable firearms permit, a long history of weapons violations and, and, and assaults. And he just simply didn't want to comply with a driver's license and registration. So, of course, as you're frustrated, so are we. I mean, we had yeah. to shut down the interstate for, for a few minutes. We had to get our SWAT team response. We had to break the window, um, uh, apply a taser, and get him out of the vehicle because he was making threats with a weapon. And we can't let an individual like that just drive down the road. Who knows? He might pull into the Smith parking lot and, and, uh, and, and hurt some innocent bystanders. So we have a duty to uh, make sure that he is safe and the public is safe. And it's just kind of sad that it had to turn into that. When did the police, uh, the, the trooper who pulled him over, fully realize who this individual was if he was refusing to give the information, the driver's license and everything else? How was it established who this person was and uh, then ultimately, the potential danger. I mean, obviously, he made uh, the the verbal threat that you're going to have to take me out of here and maybe a shootout. But wh- how, how do you get that information on this guy to the point where you know we're in trouble? So what we do is we, yeah, you know, of course we have there's a so identification on the vehicle that we can run, and then we can pull up photos and match photos with the person who's inside the vehicle, and we can do some investigative work to see you know who this person is. And, uh, and then we can run crew. I mean, we knew at the time that he was in the car that just one week prior to this, he had the same standoff with the American Fort Police Department. And it was a very physical custody arrest um, with that department where they had to tase and actually wrestle him to the ground and so on and so forth. So we knew all those things going into it before we had to, you know, deploy our actions on him last night. Wow. So he had the same thing with an American Fork police officer. Uh, it just in- incredible. Colonel, do you have any any idea at all how much this cost the taxpayer? And again, I'm putting all the blame on this guy. You know, nothing sure. on the on the police. Any idea how much this cost the 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 your department? How much this cost the taxpayers? Oh yeah, for, I mean, we had we had our whole SWAT team out there. They had to deploy, so I'd say there's a dozen of them. And and you think that's you know they're out there for four to six hours. Um, you're talking a couple thousand dollars on that, and then and then you got the road closure for a short time, and and the traffic control, and you know, and the, the sad thing is, that we should be out there helping the public during yeah. this time. Well, I mean, helping folks get on their way, or making sure that everybody's safe on the roadway, taking care of the impaired drivers, 
making sure people are traveling the right speed. And instead, we're you know we're we're forced to deal with an individual who simply could have just given his driver's license registration. If he didn't have it, just tell us who you are, and we can run the check, give you your citation. You're on your way. Not a big deal. Yeah, yeah. I, one thing that I, I wonder if if American Fork went through this just a week before, and then you guys had to go through it. it were there steps that maybe could I won't say should, but could have been taken that might have just landed this guy in jail already? Uh, you would think so. I mean, if you look at the history of the individual, he it's not it's not the first time he's been um, caught by law enforcement. Like I said, we see that there's assault violations. We see that there's weapon violations. Uh, he had an incident just a week prior to, so yeah. you know, hopefully uh, the, the system can, can help us remedy this in the future. So what's going to happen to this guy, Colonel? Um, he'll, he'll go to jail. He'll most likely um, bail out or, or or do something in that regard and be a jack on the street. And, uh, he, may, he may be back today. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm sure or he'll, he'll do some, some time probably and, and go on from there. Several of our texters, and I think you mentioned this earlier, are asking, well, what what was the original traffic violation? What motivated? Did you say it was a lane violation? Lane travel violation, right? Yeah, yeah. Very very simple. Yeah, very yeah. simple thing. And holy cow, Colonel, thank you so much for joining us today. By the way, will the uh, Highway Patrol be involved in the Great Utah Shakeout today? Absolutely, we'll be uh, definitely um, practicing that drill here in about what. Uh, less than an hour. Yeah, yeah, we've got about 46 or 7 minutes before that happens. Colonel, I always appreciate your willingness to join us and uh, help us walk through things. Thanks so much. You bet, thank you. Colonel Danny Fierro with us here at KSL News Radio with the Highway Patrol Department of Public Safety uh, to talk about what unfolded. Just a ridiculous scenario last night, and all it would have taken is just compliance. License and registration, please. That's it. And all those people who were delayed, all of the standoff, all of the taxpayer dollars, this makes me insane.